Welcome to the Tuesday, April 3rd edition of William & Mary Television's Flat Hat Insider. I'm Lauren Stevenson. The student assembly presidential elections may have pronounced Kurt Mills as the winner, but the many complaints and sanctions against the candidates of the election tainted the spirit of change the new SA leadership was hoping to create. An elections commission appointed by outgoing SA President Kave Sadegian and SA Vice President Molly Bowman investigated a host of complaints ranging from accusations of double flyering, libel, door-to-door -door campaigning, and bribery. Several candidates faced campaign suspensions near Election Day. Many involved with the race have been critical of how the election was handled, citing the crowded ticket, ambiguous election guidelines, and an under-trained election commission. Different members of the LGBTQ community and various religious leaders gathered in Morton Hall this past Thursday for an open discussion on a very divisive current social issue. Panelists from the different communities were united in their call for tolerance of the LGBTQ community. Several speakers encouraged tolerance from their own stories and perspectives, while others, such as United Methodist Campus Minister Max Blalick, spoke of the necessity of a non-discriminatory spirituality. This past week, students hosted an Ethical Fashion Awareness Week. The week included the college's second fair trade fair and an ethical fashion show. The students of this year's Ethical Fashion Seminar hope to shed light on the different issues involved with the clothes we wear, from the harsh production lines and sweatshops to the farms in which cotton grows. The Ethical Fashion Show was part of a new campaign sponsored by Fair Trade USA, where sustainable and ethically made clothing was presented. The Fair Trade Festival hosted local vendors that emphasized ethical practices, such as the Alta Gracia line sold at Barnes & Noble and New Forest Earth. Though the essay elections are over, an issue brought up by the candidates has stayed in the spotlight. Discussion on mental health awareness in the essay elections has resonated with students. This week, Eric Garrison joins us for the interview on this topic. Garrison is the advisor for the organization Health Outreach Peer Educators, better known as HOPE. Welcome, Eric. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. So, first of all, can you tell um, our students and our viewers what exactly HOPE is? HOPE, like you said, is the uh, Health uh, Outreach Peer Educators. It's a group of students, about 40, 50 students, in a variety of areas. There's uh, alcohol, tobacco, and other substances, sexual health, every two minutes, which is sexual aggression. And we also have a group that deals with mental health issues. And mental health issues, as I was talking about before, have been in the spotlight. Um, just recently on campus, uh, unfortunately, over the last few years, we have had a few suicides but also in the essay elections. Um, this is an important issue to students and various candidates brought up the issue of more funding for mental health. What did you think about um, the candidates uh, putting a spotlight on mental health awareness at the college? I think it's wonderful that students want to address mental health concerns. It's something that we try to do actively every single day. It's a policy of the campus and it's been going on. It's a practice that's been going on for, for decades now. So I'm happy to see that everybody wants to get involved and improve the mental health here at the college. Now, what is your message to students um, who are, uh, who think that there's a stigma attached to mental health? What do you tell them? You know, mental health uh, counseling is, is more like life skills. So our students who might be struggling or feeling overwhelmed, we would encourage them, you know, to seek counseling services. Our counseling service is a top-notch facility here. It's an entry point to other areas, uh, other specialties in the area. So for instance, we may see a person a couple times in the counseling service and then send them on to someone who is even better at that subject or might be able to see them longer or uh, provide you know, a different type of, of, of intervention that they may need that we're not trained in. So our counseling services over in, uh, in Blow Hall are, are top-notch people. And again, it's an entry point into this fantastic student-centered service. Absolutely. And, you know, you do a lot. And one of the things that has brought been brought to students' attention recently is the at-risk um, computer program. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? There's a, a group called Cognito, and they are a, a, a web developing service, and they've created a fantastic program called uh, At Risk Friends in College. You create an avatar, and you, you interact with five situations, five different types of students, and you learn how to be a better uh, bystander, a, a better intervener 
to help students in the future. So it's a it's free to students. It's it's a lot of fun for, for those who uh, who enjoy like role playing games or avatar type games. And as of right now, there are still prizes out there available for anyone who participates. And I guess my last question is, what do you hope for the future? Um, you know, you uh, deal with mental health awareness and, and the other aspects that Hope deals with every day. Um, you educate the students who do provide um, those services. What is your hope for the future, uh, whether that be more funding or uh, more, uh, I guess, uh, like advertising to students? What are your thoughts? Students need to understand that they are often the frontline people. They see these uh, concerns coming up in their residence halls and their classrooms, which is why the at-risk program is so important, because it teaches you how to be a frontline uh, agent to, to assist students in, in these areas. And I encourage everybody, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling stressed, if life doesn't feel in balance for you, then seek help. I tell everybody, you know, seeking sensible support is a sign of strength, and I believe that firmly. Absolutely, and something all of us here at William & Mary Television and the Flat Hat agree with as well. Thank you so much for your time, Eric. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. For more stories, pick up the latest edition of the Flat Hat and check us out on our website, flathatnews.com. And be sure to follow William & Mary Television and the Flat Hat on Twitter and like us on Facebook. We'll see you next week for another edition of the Flat Hat Insider.